another edition of Coach's Corner brought to you by Fats Cafe. I'm your host, Caitlin Grisillo, and joining us today is USC Aiken men's baseball coach, Coach Thomas. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Your team defeated Montevallo twice last weekend to take the series. How big was that for your program? Well, obviously it was better than, than the opposite, uh, not winning two out of three. You know me, I like to win them all. Sure. I thought uh, we had two great comeback wins on Saturday. Um, got behind and, uh, you know, battled and came back and won both close games. And then, you know, we had a chance to win Sunday. We just didn't, we didn't pitch very well. Uh, we didn't play defense very well. We scored 10 runs. You'd think we would, you know, you would win. But, uh, you know, they scored 14. It's a very unique ballpark. Uh, very short fences. Their team is built for that, without a doubt. And uh, a pop-up that would be on our warning track will be, out of their park, and uh, nothing wrong with that. That's just what they do, and they build their ballpark for that. So, uh, yes, it was good that we won two out of three, obviously, and uh, uh, we haven't played well there the last two times. The last two times we've been there, we've lost two out of three. So that was a positive, um, but I wish we could have got that last one. That would have really helped us. I just wish we could have played better on Sunday, and, you know, if we lose – you know, five to four or seven to six or something, it's okay. But we just didn't play well, and that, that was concerning. Yes, sir. Now, will you get a chance to play them home, or is that it? No, just uh, every other the year. Way That's okay. the way we do it, every other year. And uh, there's two teams that we don't play. You know, there's 13 the teams. Yeah. Okay. So there's two teams that, that we, we rotate a two-year cycle that we don't play. Okay. And uh, this year, our two teams are Young Harris and Columbus State. That'll be the same next year. We go a two-year cycle. So you play home this year, Montebello away this year. They'll be back at our place next year. Right. Chaz Powell was named the PBC Player of the Week. Can you talk about his play against the Falcons? You know, he's very good offensively. Chaz had a, uh, uh, an eventful week uh, mm -hmm. last week because we didn't have a midweek game. With, we were originally scheduled with Anderson on Wednesday night, but a year ago they canceled it, and uh, we couldn't fill that date. So... Uh, uh, Chaz, it gave us an opportunity to move Chaz to second base uh, from third. You know, he was struggling at third. We thought it might help him at second, put Rob Youngblood at third. So uh, it was an eventful week for him. Um, offensively, this weekend he was really good. He's a great offensive player. He was one of the guys that made great adjustments to how they pitched us. Uh, I, I thought. I thought offensive was really good. He still struggled a little bit defensively, and uh, he knows that. There's nobody that works harder than Chaz Powell. Okay. Nobody. He, uh, he's in the weight room all the time. He stays after practice, works. He comes in early in the day and works. I mean, there's nobody that, that, that works harder than Chaz Powell. And uh, he's a big part of our offense. You know, uh, again, defensive struggle. That ain't no secret. He knows it. I know it. Everybody knows it. So, uh, but it's a great honor to be Peach Belt Conference Player of the Week. Um, I think that's his second time. Right. So you talk about the changes a little bit. Is that just trying to find a comfort level for him and something that you all Well, it, it, yes, for him too and, and for our team, more importantly. We were, you know, we just got to play better defense. And, uh, you know, it's no great secret. We got Ty Barkell out. Mm -hmm. That hurts us uh, defensively, offensively, everything. So we've had to play a little bit of musical chairs. And, and guys are here, they're here, and not used to playing here. Matt Bossy's playing first. He's not used to playing first, you know. So uh, I thought last week it was just an opportunity to try something different. And, uh, you know, I told Chaz that, you know, we're, we, we're maybe we're putting you in positions that – it's not allowing you to be successful, but when you look at the whole lineup, we got to have him in there. So right. where are you going to play him? You know, so it's been a it's been tough, but uh, he's handled it well, and uh, our team has handled that well. The changes, and uh, you know, but we got to play better defense. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Your team sits in sixth place in the conference right now, and you're hosting UNC Pembroke, who y'all didn't get a chance to see last year. Um, what do you think y'all need to do in order to win the series against the Braves? Well, they're a very good team. Um, they're, they're leading the conference in batting average as a team. Uh, they got two or three guys that pitch really well. One guy that's got a 1-9 ERA, strikes out a guy in an inning. Uh, he's pretty good. Uh, so it's going to be a tough challenge for us. You know, sixth place is, for our standards, is not good. We know that. We accept it. 
we take responsibility for it. Uh, our program is way beyond that. And, uh, but it is what it is. That's where we're at. So this is a huge, huge weekend for us. Uh, we need our guys to go out and pitch well. We need to play defense better than we've played. And, and offensively, we're going to have to make adjustments and we're going to have to do the things we have to do. And, uh, you know, it's good to be back home, that's for sure. Yes, but it's it's very, very challenging who we have to play. So uh, Friday night's going to be a all-out war out there at the Burke now, I can tell you. Yes, sir. Now with an upcoming 14-home um, game stretch, do you think that will help you climb up the ladder in the conference? Well, I hope so. Uh, we have actually nine more, three weekends of, of conference play left. Um, for me, since I've been here for 16, this is my 16th year, I've never had, I've never had the conference put put us on the road five out of seven weekends. I thought that was a little, you know, over the edge there. Uh, it's, I'm tired of riding in buses, as I know the players are. And I mean, that, that's just kind of tough. So, But it does give us the last three weekends at home. So that's a positive. Now, the negative of it, two of the teams are the top four teams in the conference. So we've got Pembroke this weekend. We've got Flagler the last weekend of April. And then next weekend, we've got Georgia Regents, which we all know that makes their season is to beat us and they play us unbelievably tough and they're a good ball club so uh it's better to be playing at home for sure no doubt uh, we need our fans you know uh, i think sometimes we uh, you know i think because we're 21 and 11 people are giving up on us you know 20 that's not the end of the world we're 21 and 11 my lord i mean there's a lot of teams that like to be that uh, but it's not to our standards, yeah. that's for sure. We've had some tough breaks. We played two weeks without Tyler Moore. We, you know, Ty Barkell's out. We, Nile Goins out. We, we've had some tough breaks. But we need our fans back this weekend. I, and I don't think our fans, as you well know, baseball has a big fan base yes, here sir. in Aiken. And I don't think they've given up on us because we're 21 11. I just think they forgot about us because we've been on the road for right. so long. and. Uh, you know, we need to let the fans know that we are back home. We're going to be home 14 times in April. So let's fill them stands and help these young men. Yes, sir. Your team has such a strong lineup from the leadoff spot to the number nine hitter. How great is it that you have a tough out at every single spot? Well, that's been good. You know, it hasn't been as good lately at times. Uh, you know, we've. I tell the guys in February every year, the scouting reports are going to start flying around the conference. They're going to know your weaknesses. You better learn to, to make adjustments because they're not just going to throw the ball in there waist high to you. Right. Um, you know, potentially we have that kind of offense. Now, when you take Ty Barkell out of it, it makes a difference. But um, it, it is a good a good lineup. And, we, and the, the, the weird thing is I've had to change positions in the order mm -hmm. quite often and uh, that's kind of been a weird weird situation for us but offensively uh, it's like this weekend we got to score some runs we know that we know that so we got to hit the bottom we got to hit the top we've got to manufacture a little bit we got a situational hit a little bit so uh, but it has it has been a team that that every guy that steps in that box you do have confidence in right does the order of the lineup change based on home or away does that affect well not really in? based on home or away we we this is in, in my 28 years in college baseball I've probably made more adjustments in the batting order this year than I've ever done it's it's been you know we've had some inconsistency problems we've had some injury problems mm -hmm. and that has caused me to have to move people around and, you know, this guy might be hitting in the six hole today and two hole tomorrow and the leadoff spot tomorrow, the four hole the next day. And that's been a little frustrating for me to try to figure that out, you know. Right. And uh, But I think that um, our guys just have to realize that, you know, it's on me. It's on coach. Let coach be the – if I post the right lineup up there, we win, everything's good. If I post the wrong lineup up there – and it didn't flow right, then it's my fault, you know. So uh, they have to accept, you know, my experience and what I've, how, how many years I've been doing it and understand that the lineup might change daily. We're not sure. Just have to trust the coach. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs>
Cody Belcher is coming on strong lately, and although he's a leadoff guy, he has five homers. Does that surprise you at all, and can you talk about his You play? know, he's, he, he's a tough cookie, and he's played extremely hard, and uh, he's one of those guys. You know, a weekend ago, he was hitting in the six hole. Uh, three weekends ago, he was hitting in the two hole. This weekend, he went back to the leadoff, as he was at the beginning of the year. It's, and he's been one of those guys that's hitting like three or four different spots in the order. I moved him to a six a couple weekends ago because I thought we needed RBIs and he can knock in runs. And But then this weekend, I felt like we needed him back in the leadoff spot. And, uh, you know, he's, he's adjusted to that well. Um, he's one of the guys that's made good adjustments with the scouting reports that's flown around. And, you know, I mean, we, we you, you wouldn't believe how some of the defenses are setting up against our offense. You know, you see those big shifts. Mm -hmm. in the big leagues and you know you normally don't see that in college but uh, we're, we're facing defenses that are shifting almost like a pro shift and uh, what do you mean by that well they're moving the second baseman over behind the second base bag okay they're moving the shortstop over almost to third base right. in the, what we call a six hole and they're moving the center fielder over i mean the right fielder over almost to center field and the center fielder over here and and then they're pitching us to make us hit it to that spot. And uh, that's what I talk about with adjustments. You gotta be able to make adjustments. You right. gotta be able to hit it through that hole over there that is wide open at second base. Right. And uh, Cody's been one of those guys that has, has handled the adjustments a little bit. And you know, he, he's played well. It doesn't surprise me he's hit, what do you say, five or six home runs? Yes, sir. You know, he's he's got some pop. And uh, I've always known that. I mean, that's really kind of went in after the fall thinking we were going to hit him in the middle of the order but we need him to lead off too because he is patient and he he works the counts and things like that so we need him in the leadoff spot right it seems like a different starting pitcher steps up on your staff every week who do you think it'll be this week and why well we need all all three of them to step up i can tell you that <laughs> uh, you know that's that's been part of our problem a little bit. When I say problem, look, we're 21 and 11. It's right. not like it's it's the end of the world, but for our standards, that's yes, a sir. problem. Yes, sir. So, you know, we've got to get better consistency out of all three. And look, Forrest Kumas has potential to be the best pitcher in this league. He pitched in Omaha for South Carolina five years ago in the in the in the World Series. I mean, he's got potential to be big time guy, and he showed that in in flashes. You know, he has shown us that, that he can be that guy. Uh, you know, we went, we're going to go with the same three this weekend we did last weekend with Nick Yobi and, and Trevor Hutto. Trevor Hutto jumped out there to 7-0, and uh, was 4-0 and in the conference, was uh, doing pretty good. The last two weekends, he hadn't been as good. We need Trevor to be as good. We need Trevor to pitch as good. We need Yobi to pitch as good. So... We need all three of them, and we, one of the positives with our team over the last couple of weeks is we're starting to get some guys at the end of games that are beginning to perform to their level. And, you know, we talk all the time about there's upper echelon peach belt type players on our team, okay? Those guys have to perform. And we have 10 or 12 of those guys. They have to perform. So the end of the game, has, early in the year, was a problem. We're starting to figure that out a little bit. We're getting some, some experienced, older players that are, that are starting to show us, hey, don't worry about us. Count on, you, know, you can count on us at the end. So we've got to get them starters to do the same thing. Yes, sir. Jimmy Lynch has five saves this season, which is second most in the Peach Belt. How dominant is he, in your opinion? You know, he can be as dominant as, as anybody. You know, he, it's a mindset for him. Uh, when he's in the right mindset, he can be as good as anybody. And uh, he does command the strike zone. Uh, he's got a pretty good breaking ball, and he attacks hitters. And that's what you look for in a closer. And, uh, you know, I, I've talked to him a lot about this. When your mind is right, when you walk up there on that mound and you have your mind right, you're as good as there is. You know, you just got to have that mind right every time when you step out there. And, uh, you know, I would love for him to get three saves this weekend. And that means we get three wins, and, yes, and that would put him to the top in the conference, and that would give us three wins. So uh, I'd love for that to happen this weekend. Yes, sir. Well, thank you again so much for joining us, and we look forward to welcoming you all home.
upcoming home stretch. Thank you very much. We look forward to being at home. <laughs> yes, sir. That wraps up another edition of Coach's Corner brought to you by Fats Cafe. I'm your host, Caitlin Grisillo, with USC Aiken men's baseball coach, Coach Thomas. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.